This is Remington's idea of a trigger guard, painted aluminum, which is chipping by the way, and I haven't even installed it on the rifle. I can do better. It serves a purpose, plus it has to be aesthetically pleasing if it's going to go on this rifle. This is one of those pieces that you can make look really good. So, uh, the majority of this is not going to go on paper. G-A-U-G-G, -G -G, whatever. The length, width, of course, holes, dimensions of this hole, just the critical stuff. The actual shape, I'm going to trace it directly onto the steel. If I remember right, this width was 640, 632, 640. 2.750. Find this diameter. I'll just stick a drill bit through it. Rear. This is the front. 172, which is uh, 11 64ths. I also need distance right there. 0.970. just rough it out 1.56 1.56 all right 0 0.185 0 0.184 so 0.184 thick and we'll start from there let that cool down for a little bit So just like before we have this trapezoidal shaped material, we're going to go ahead and square it up before we do any dimension markings. So all I did um, off camera was to sand down the milling marks on the uh, belt sander just to get it nice and flat. Now we do the other side. So here I'm not going to expect a lot of precision. I'm just wanting to get it within a thou or two. 1959 1958. Yeah. It didn't happen on camera. It didn't happen. Alright. So I'm going to chuck this up flat and mill the ends and get those trued up. Three point five seven three. Three point five seven five seven four. That's close enough. So our thickness, eh, just a hair under one inch, 992, 990. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring it down to, oh, let's start off at 0 0.8. So I think I'm at a point thickness-wise I can uh, start laying out the, uh, the pattern here. What I've decided to do is measure the standard, the stock uh, trigger guard, take some measurements off of it, and I want a little thicker right here. Three quarters I think will be a little bit too much, uh, but I think uh, 0.7 inches would be just fine. And then bring these, which were originally at 0.475, bring these to a about a half inch or so. And that'll kind of create the profile that I want to have. Uh, it'll be measured 0.7 right here at this point, 0.5 here and there. And all I really need to do is just directly transfer the markings onto the new piece. But first, I think what I need to do is lay out my two holes on a center line. 923, 924, so that'll be 460.
187 there and we will make this the bottom and if you recall from earlier we have an 11 64 and a quarter inch So I'm going to line up as best I can the holes. Right there looks good. So for tracing all I'm really doing is using a uh, sharpened scribe to get down in the corner. The profile is going to stay the same but the thickness right here is going to change a little bit. Um, yeah, so I had that wrong. As this is laid out, the bigger side is towards the front. This has the 250 and this has the 1132. Uh, sorry, 1164. 0.172. So I'm going to use a regular uh, stub drill. It's uh, going to give me a lot less flexibility because I only need to go down to right there. Raise my backstop. So that'll stop me from drilling into my vise. So I cheated here a little bit. I let the 5 8 end mill do my corner and my inside corner right here. And uh, I also used it to flatten this surface nice and shiny. And uh, I'm about to do the 3 8 one up here too. I don't want to tear up my 3 8 because that's the only one I got. And then we'll flip it over and uh, mill the slot for the trigger. I'm going to leave this surface right here for now. I'm going to need it for when I mill the trigger slot. So our slot is 0 .405, 0 .407. I'm going to go with a 3 8 and then I'll just walk it. 12 fell on each side. So I'm doing some math here and I'm configuring the center of this slot to be right in the middle. What I need to do is make sure that I have 90 thousandths on both sides because now I'm going to thin it up but I want equal amount left on each side. Alright so the reason I milled 
this all down is because I wanted to get this and this parallel. I'm going to do this concave and this concave on the belt sander because if you look at our stock trigger, it's actually a little bit uh, concave on the sides right here. So all I need to do is take down, oh, about three-eighths of an inch on, on both sides, making sure that when I make my last cut, these holes in this slot is dead center, and I have enough material on each side. Should have around 90 thou on both sides, 87 there, 90 there, 89. So my thickness is done here. I even have equal distance between my quarter inch hole, 0.180, and 0.180. So I'm within a couple of thou on this and these two surfaces uh, thicknesses. So what I have left to do is cut apart the bottom since I'm done with it, sand the sides, the concave, and then draw a line all the way around the center of it to contour the outside here. to North Texas. So the work done so far, drill, drill, slot, equalize, equalize. I just got off the grinder, got most of the contour built in. I'm going to put this on the uh, belt grinder and try to get this nice and flat. This is going to be three quarters, well, 0.7 inches wide when I'm done with it. So I got a little bit of whittling to do. that by two, just drive a line, 0.464. What did I have? 464. Point three five zero oh, one one four. So what I need to do, this should be my point seven width, and that intersection is going to be right smack dab in the middle. So what I did here is I took my width, divided it by two, scribed a line, then I subtracted half of my desired width, 350, from my center line, and I got this. So I ended up with 0.114, that leaves me with 0.7 in the center. Now I need to do the same thing here, but I need to work with half inch. And my half inch is going to start... I'm just eyeballing it. I'm nowhere near perfection here. 0.464 minus 0 0.250, 0 0.214. Then just to double check, measure that line, and it's about five. So the tape, if I line that up from intersection to intersection, will give me my curvature
<laughs> oh my, that looks beautiful. So what I'll do now is scribe a line along my tape. It's pretty thin stuff, so. So at some point, that has to come back to 0 0.640 right here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just end the tape, line it up with this surface right here and that surface right there. And then that'll be my contour for the back side. Same thing goes for the front. I'll just lay the tape on there, kind of curve it, make sure it looks just like the other side. Now all I have to do is sand up to the line. None of this has to be deadly precise. It just has to look congruent with the other side. I'm going to spray it again, draw a line in the center, file to that line, make this about oh, 20, 30 thou thickness, and then leave the center nice and fat. So now I'm contouring the inside, uh, basically taking it from a flat to a rounded over on each side. Right in that area is where I need to file down a little more. And that's what I'm looking for right here is the uh, just a little whisper of an edge. That's all I want. When I take a sandpaper to it, a crocus cloth, that's going to blend that very nice. That looks fairly decent. Compared to the other side where it still has its full thickness, I haven't touched it yet. The good thing about owning a whole drawer full of uh, files is having the right one with the right radius. Um, this one fits that back side pretty, pretty perfectly. So... So I contoured the inside, I got some rough marks in there, but I can take that out on the lathe and my little buffer wheel. Ooh, that's hot. It's, uh, it's pretty thin right there, it doesn't take much long for it to uh, heat up. That sucker got hot fast. Right now I'm using a uh, Kratex bit on the end of a Dremel. I have a little burr right here I need to get rid of. You ever get to a point in a project where you just have to put it down? Or risk wrecking the whole thing? Uh, I'm at that point right now. This is done. Uh, pretty proud of it. I'm liking it very much. I got that nice even line going across here. I may radius off these uh, corners right here. I'm going to see what it looks like on the rifle when I get it done. Factory version, they really didn't take much time into radiusing anything or rounding things off or putting some time and effort into uh, the craftsmanship. But, you know, it's mass production. It is what it is. But uh, there's the finished product. Thanks for watching.